Many second order systems exhibit what we call resonant behavior. An example is this mass spring damper system where if this damper is very light, then this is just going to be a mass and a spring. And the sinusoidal input is going to cause this system to move at larger and larger amplitudes. The same is true for this fluid system where we have a resistance, a fluid inertance, and a capacitance as well as this electrical system where again we have a resistance, capacitance, and an inductance. Here are the damping ratio natural frequency which we would have to drive for each of these systems but I'm just supplying them for us here. And we're interested in when damping ratio is low and a typical case would be when the damping is low for this system, for resistance being low for this system, and then for the electrical system it's actually when resistance is high. That's summarized here. These are all cases that lead to low damping ratio for this system. Now I should mention that all the variables contribute, so M and K also matter, but we usually blame the dissipative element if we have uh, resonant behavior, mainly because the dissipative element is the one that we would hope to have most control over as far as design variables go. What happens with resonant behavior is if you solve for a free response or a step response, that the system is going to oscillate with a relatively slow decay as we've seen many times before. So this might die out with an exponential which is quite long. But more damaging is if you apply a steady input such as a sinusoidal response where you're applying at a frequency close to the natural frequency. If you apply an input like this then you're going to have a very large amplitude near that natural frequency. The behavior of second order systems is also described by this frequency response plot that we've already seen. This has a slope of zero for low frequencies and a slope of minus two for high frequencies. But of particular interest here is what happens near the natural frequency where we already know the value. We just have to plug in S, uh, omega equals omega n and what we discover is that this is just equal to one over two zeta at omega is equal to omega n. In other words, if you have very low damping ratio, that means you're going to have a very high peak over here. Another property of interest, I'm just going to copy, make a copy of this peak, and I'm also going to sketch in here what we call minus 3 dB down from the peak. So here's the peak value. Minus 3 dB is also called the half power point. And the reason for that is because minus dB is also 0.707 or 1 over square root of 2. If this were uh, the output were say a voltage then the power is related to the voltage by V squared over R. In other words you usually have to square whatever the output amplitude is in order to find the power. So if we go minus 3 dB down from the peak that's also half power. Often we're interested in the width of this which we call delta omega. And an interesting property is that the higher the peak, the narrower this, uh, this minus 3 dB uh, band. And this is given by, well, first of all, let me just note that the quantity 1 over 2 zeta is also called the Q, especially in electrical systems. This stands for quality. Uh, so in radios, for example, it's desirable to have a high Q. In other words, you want a very low damp, uh, lightly damped system. There's also an approximation you can make, which is, uh, we remember we said that the narrower, uh, sorry, the higher the peak, the narrower the band. Well, it just turns out that 1 over 2 zeta also describes the ratio between omega r and delta omega. Again, this is saying that the lower the damping ratio, the narrower the band. Now let's return to our first order systems where we have the generic transfer function A over S plus A in this frequency response where I'm going to sketch in the asymptotes again. And the reason for that is I just want to point out that the value of the magnitude at the corner frequency A is just going to be minus 3 dB from the peak, which we already called the half power point. So what this means is that if you have inputs that are at low frequencies around here, that these things get passed through with a gain of 1. 0 dB corresponds to a gain of 1 or a magnitude of 1. And then high frequencies have small amplitude 
So the system has a tendency not to pass these through. And the term for this is called a low pass filter. This is one of the most common things that uh, you design in uh, a lot of systems with periodic inputs is a low pass filter. An example of a system that gives you low pass filter behavior is if I had a voltage source and a, res a resistor and a capacitor and we were only measuring the voltage across the capacitor as our output. Then if I were to apply a voltage E, which was a sinusoid, then the output VO would be another sinusoid. It would actually be shifted by 90 degrees, but it would be at the same frequency and it would be at high amplitude. That contrasts with what, we hap what happens if we apply E of high frequency. Let me just try to indicate a sinusoid that oscillates very rapidly. And then VO, if this was a frequency around here, it would be much smaller in amplitude than the input. And so you would get something like this. In other words, the high frequency is uh, behavior has small amplitude. Uh, Typically, when we design low-pass filters, we are interested in where the half power point is, and we call the cutoff frequency the frequency um, where you have half power. So for a first-order system, if you have a low-pass filter, uh, the cutoff frequency is at uh, a, omega equals A.